Hey there, everybody. About to start another Marketing Puppet Radio show in a few minutes. Tell somebody, we are about to have a great show here today. I'm going to have uh, the Delaware blogger, Miss Antoinette Blake. We're going to talk about uh, Facebook. We're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about uh, quite a few things. So get ready. I'd like to welcome you to the Marketing Pulpit Radio Show. We are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls, we're saving businesses, we're saving jobs, we're saving our community. Now, if I save a soul along the way, don't hold that against me. We'll just call that icing on the cake. Because the mission here at the Marketing Pulpit Radio Show is to build strong businesses in our community so that we can put our people to work. And we do that with business development, job creation, and service. So if you ever find yourself at a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, just turn on the Marketing Pulpit Radio Show because we are on a mission. We are on a mission. We've come here every Friday. We bring you this information because as the song says, you got to give more power to the people. Now, there are all kinds of power, but I tell you one thing, you get economic power right, these other powers tend to fall right in line. So that's what we're about. We're about starting businesses. We're about making businesses successful. You know what, folks? We actually start enough businesses. Every time you turn around, somebody start a business. You can't throw a rock without hitting a business on them. But the key is to make those businesses successful. Only then when you achieve economic empowerment. And that's why we call this show the Marketing Pulpit Radio Show. Every Friday, 10.30 a.m., Go out here and tell somebody. We're broadcasting live from downtown Silver Spring, Maryland, right outside of the nation's capital, about a stone's throw from Washington, D.C. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. I'm Robert Gatewood. I am a entrepreneur. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I love businesses. I love starting them. I love making them successful. I love helping other people succeed. So I am living my dream. I'm living my best life, as they say. I am doing what I was put on this earth to do. We call that self-actualization, when you're doing what you were put on earth to do. If you ever study Maslow's hierarchy of need, you're down at the bottom level, you're doing things that put food on the table, you move up the scale a little bit, you're taking care of secu security, then you move up to esteem, then you get to that pinnacle at the very top. It's called self-actualization. Doing what you were put on this earth to do. Now, some of you guys out here and ladies were put on this earth to have a successful business. Not everybody was uh, tagged to be a business owner, and not everybody was tagged to be a government worker or a Fortune 500 person or a teacher. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to get to eat. Put food on the table. Put that kid through college. Get those wheels. Buy that house. But never, ever take your eye off the prize. At some point, you've got to make a decision on how your legacy is going to be told. What comes next after you leave that job? Can't take it with you. So no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, you can't go wrong by starting a successful business. And success is the operative word. I'm going to tell you a little story today. And by the way, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining in, all the new, new listeners, Thank you very much. And all of the folks who've hung in there with me for the last nine years, will be nine years in May. Marketing Pulpit was named in honor of my dad, a Baptist minister. I used to sit out in front of the pulpit and watch him preach for many years. And as he was on his dying bed, I wanted to find a way to honor him. And he passed away a few months, a few weeks, matter of fact, right before the show went on the air. And so the show is Marketing Pulpit, but it's we are a business development show. We're all about making businesses successful. The number is 1-800-450-7876. 1-800-450-7876 if you want to join the conversation. But today I want to tell you a story. 
like a Bernie Mac clip. I'm tell you a story, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. That's my Bernie Mac impression. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story. I was driving in to work today, and I looked over to my looked over to one side, and I saw a big old Family Dollar tractor trailer backed up to the back of the store. Matter of fact, it was in front of the store, and it reminded me of uh, something that happened in my past. Because Family Dollar is closing up 390 stores. That's a lot of stores. So um, as I was driving, I see this and. Um, it reminded me of the times when I used to worry about, just like many of us, when is my company or the place where I work is going to end up going out of business? Is it going to be the next one to fall? I go back to when I first got out of college. I graduated from Livingstone College. I was a smart dude, too. I was supposed to go to law school, change my mind, came up here. I was recruited by this company called Grand Union Supermarkets. I mean, they dangled this money in front of me. I was a young 21-year-old kid, and uh, I said, man, forget law school. This guy's offering me some money right now. So I jumped on it, came up here, and I rose up through the ranks after being very a short period there, and I was, rose up to the rank to become a regional buyer. I was buying for 100 stores between uh, Washington, D.C. and uh, Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia Beach area. So I was, I was hot stuff. But boy, I tell you one thing, I was working for this guy, and back then is when they used to really, they would yell at you. I mean, your boss would actually come in there and just scream at you. I said, man, this sucks. They would pay me good money, but I said, man, this is, this is not gonna last very long. But anyway, before I could quit them, the company ended up going out of business after about, I'd been there about six years, six or seven years, and they folded. I said, darn it, okay, that, that sucks even worse. I didn't even get a chance to quit. Uh, so I went to my next job. Uh, you know, I wandered in the wilderness for a little while, and finally become a, uh, joined this company called Telegrocery. Telegrocery was one of the first home delivery supermarkets in the country. I was the guy in charge of the technology and the uh, uh, office and administration. So I was kind of like, a, I kind of cut my technology teeth early. Actually rose up to become a president of the company. Very young, still in my late 20s, early 30s. Became president of the company. And... Um, and then I realized back then, even though I was the president of this company, I was still not inoculated from the whims of forces that were beyond my control. Once again, things happen. Next thing you know, I'm back out here hustling again. I joined another company, a big company here in the local DC area, National Food Company. Rose up through the ranks, became the vice president of marketing and business development. I designed their logo, their, not their logo, their, uh, Slogan, gave them their first e-commerce uh, website, uh, designed their trucks, their signage. I was like hot stuff again. But then again, once again, politics got in the way, and next thing I know, here I am again. The moral of this story is, now I work for a company called Gatewood Marketing Incorporated, a company that bears my own name, bears my name, my daddy's name, my great-granddaddy's name, who happened to be a slave, that is exactly true. My great-granddaddy was a slave. That's how closely we are still aligned to our past. And I'm just proud to know that my daughter, who also bears my name, would never have to really worry about being unemployed because I am a successful business owner. There's a moral in this story. This is a great time to be a business owner because there's so much uncertainty out here. There is so much uncertainty. The only thing that you can be certain of in this day is that of your own abilities. You cannot do that in a job. I don't care how good you are in that job. There's some little snot that's going to be telling you what to do. There's somebody going to be stabbing you in the back. Somebody's trying to hold you down. So, and I'm not saying that's everywhere, but as a business owner, you are free. I was free with Kizzy. I think they said that in uh, one of those shows, Roots or something. So, um, now the key is, though, you've got to know how to do it. Everybody, you just don't come up, wake up one day and, and learn how to be a business owner. You've got to hustle. You've got to understand how the business world works. And if you haven't figured it out yet, you better get somebody to help you figure it out. Somebody like myself or hang on to your day job. So what I'm just saying this morning is that I woke up this morning feeling good. 
I mean, I'm turning cartwheels coming down the stair today, saying I am a business owner. I can determine my own destiny. I can hire people. I can put people to work. I can pass a job down to my family. So you can do this too. That's what I'm saying. You can do this. Don't worry about the fact that you have a good paying job right now because that could change with the drop of a hat. I am saying start taking some of those resources that you have, some of those skills that you have, and leverage them into a successful business. And you will experience a freedom like nothing you've ever felt before in your life. I mean, I wake up in the morning, man, I'm like saying to myself, man, I'm like, I'm off every day. I can come up here and do this show. Nobody's back there at the office pacing, wondering where I am, where some of my clients might be, but there is no boss per se. Now, I got a zillion clients, so all of them are like mini bosses, but there's a difference. You can tell every one of them to go somewhere if you show so shows because you are free. Now, why am I saying all this? Because I look at where the country is heading and this divisiveness, and sometimes we find ourselves, what's the, I'm going I'm to I'm coin a new phrase here. We find ourselves feeding the hand that bites us. Now, marinate on that for a minute. Some of these same folks that would rather send you back across the sea, that would rather see you not succeed, they are the ones that you are putting in this hard, hard labor for that when, when uh, they decide that you're no longer needed and put you out the past that you have nothing to show for it. So let's folks today, let's start looking at some of these skills that we have in ourselves. Let's start looking at some of this experience that we have. Let's start looking at some of that money that we put aside instead of putting on a car, instead of putting on more trips and Gucci bags and all this other craziness. Let's start putting that money back into our community and creating these successful businesses. I get very angry when I go down to my uh, the shopping centers in my in my community, and no folks, none of the folks in there that own the shop look like me. You might have one or two, but it should be ninety percent, eighty percent. Let's change this dynamic, folks. And therein lies why we have the Marketing Pulpit Radio Show. You can do this. Join me. What I want you to do is share this show. Two minutes. Let people know that there's a guy in town called Robert Gatewood. And if you listen to him, he's going to take you somewhere, particularly if you're thinking about starting a business. Now, some folks that listen to me end up becoming my clients. I had a young lady wrote me yesterday. I mean, I was so good. I said, I was so happy. Like I, like I said, I'm turning the car wheel because I get up in the morning. I just can't, can't wait to get to work. She wrote me an email. I've been dealing with her now about a year. She retained me because first she wanted me to help her decide what to name her company. So we spent, we probably spent a month with that. Then we spent another week or two trying to come up with the perfect slogan. Then we designed her logo. She has a hair product company. She owns the product, but natural hair. And then we went through this whole process. Now we started creating the labels to go on the product. She wrote me, she wrote me a note yesterday, said, Mr. Gatewood, we are growing by leaps and bounds, and you are a big part of that success. And I told her, I said, can I quote you on that? She said, yes. So you're going to see that on my website pretty soon. Anyway, go to marketing, go to gatewoodmarketing.com and see what we're doing as far as helping companies get out here and grow and be successful. So I'm not just a talker. I am a doer. I am actually putting these companies on the map because people have decided that they want to be free also. This radio show... Uh, marketing pulpit, my company Gatewood Marketing, and everything that I do is geared towards making companies successful. Now, we got a great show lined up here today. We're going to have uh, Miss Antoinette Blake. She's the Delaware blogger. She's going to be joining us after the break. Also, Palacha Day is going to come on. She's going to be, she's just as passionate as I am. She said, you better get your accounting right or you may fail other company. Marketing pulpit will be right back after the break. 
This is the Fly Jack time. Join us. Get ready, family. I'm doing it big this year and bringing the party to you. Join me and the artist you Hey there, Antoinette Blake. Hey, you're supposed to be here. Where are you? Hey, featuring Frankie Beverly and... Um, Daryl. How you doing there, Daryl? How you doing there, people? Uh, let's see. Mahalia. Carter is... Brother Gill, glad to see you guys to join me today. And today, come on in. If you're in the lobby, come on back and uh, we can get you get you mic'd up. Uh, go to Marketing Pulpit and find out what we're doing here on the show on a regular basis. We're on the uh, Facebook. We're on Marketing Pulpit. We're on uh, Twitter. Uh, we're right here in Radio 1 on the regular. So we got a great show lined up here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, blogging. And I'm going to talk about a little moment ago. Hey there, Daryl. What's happening there, bro? Good to see you. Hope everything's going well with you. Daryl Spreel, now there's another brother who's passionate about making business owners successful. We are back on the air. All right. We have philosophy. This is the Marketing Pulpit, and we are back here on the, bringing you the show every live, live here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. We call it the Good Marketing Gospel. I also have Lasha Day. Now, if you, I talk about marketing a lot. I've told you that uh, marketing is like this three-legged table you got to have. You got to have the legal, you got to have the accounting, and you've got to have the uh, marketing, of course. Marketing. Legal accounting. You cannot take away one and just think you're going to survive on the other two. You pull away that marketing leg, you don't have customers. You pull away that accounting leg, you're not taking care of your financials. You take away that legal leg, then somebody's going to end up probably suing you or you probably need to be suing somebody. But you need, to, you need those three to successfully endure. Now, you can start, of course, you don't have to start out with a lawyer, but at some point, you want to get, you want to get some legal advice on things like uh, intellectual property. We have to have one of our clients right now, we're in a big, big battle over intellectual property. And we had to bring in, actually, a couple of attorneys because the, the case really got kind of challenging. So it's good to have that legal representation. I have Felicia Day on the phone. Felicia Day, welcome to the show. Hello. All right, Blanche Day is uh, making up there. I also have, uh, coming up pretty soon, we're going to have uh, the Delaware blogger, Miss Antoinette Blake. Now, she's driven from halfway around the country. Well, I'm not going to say that, but she's been for a minute. Uh, come on in here, Antoinette. Uh, so every Friday at 10.30 a.m., we are here. We're going to have uh, Felicia Day. Are you there? I'm here, Robert. Can you hear me? Hey, Felicia Day. Welcome to the show. How you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you for having me once again. Thank you very much. You know, I was thinking the uh, other day. Uh, what I was going to talk about. And when you told me what you're going to talk about, it just reinforced every time I think about this. If you don't have your marketing folks in place, your legal team, they don't have to be sitting up in the office with you, but you better have one in your Rolodex. And you definitely better have your financial person, somebody who understands taxes, accounting, and things of that nature. Am I telling like it is, Felicia? No, but Robert, you telling it. Square it up like it is. Okay? And to be honest with you, Robert, if you really see the consistency in how businesses fail, majority of them don't have an account. That's exactly right. What's up with that? What do you let me ask you this a lot today? And uh, folks, you listen to the marketing pool bit. I'm Robert Gate with your host. I have on the line uh, Felicia Day. Uh, she has a company called, Fel she's at Felicia Day, everything on social media. And she'll give her information out on the end. And also I have in the studio, Antoinette Blake, the Delaware blogger. Good morning, Antoinette. Good morning, Robert. How are you? Happy Friday. All right. Happy Friday to you. So Felicia Day. Now, now I'm, I'm, a lot of times I talk about things because I call myself the horse's mouth. Explain to folks how important it is to have an accountant. Robert, that's one of the core... Okay, so let's go ahead and take a step back. Who okay. would you have said accounting is the language of business? Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not Mandarin, it's not marketing, and it's not sales. Right. Mm -hmm. The moment that we 
So when I really look at the statistics, and uh, the FDA said 82% of the, not 80% that failed, right? Mm -hmm. They failed because of poor financial management. And financial management starts with accounting for everything financial in your business profit. Give me that number again. How many percent fail because of? 80 percent fail because of accounting. Yep. Financial management. Wow. Man, that's, yeah. People need to pause and think about that for a minute. So you're out here, all you business owners out there, all you entrepreneurs that think you're doing this thing right, if you're not giving the proper weight to your accounting and your books and your taxes, there is a pretty good chance that you might end up in that number. So that's something to think about for a minute. Because a lot of people think that just because they can make a good cupcake, they can patch up a roof, they can uh, do a discovery in the courtroom, that everything is hunky-dory. They could lose it all because they're not doing their accounting. You know what? It's more than likely they fail to lose it all if they don't do their accounting. Because what happens is your accounting tells you your flow month, Robert. Mm -hmm. Your accounting tells you what products and services are profitable. Your accounting tells you if your marketing uh, uh, endeavor was successful. Everything that we do in our business has to be and will be accounted for in our accounting. And it's up to us to look for and look for patterns in the detail. And I'm telling you why I know you're right. Of the 100 hats that I wear, I wear a lot of hats. Man, sometimes I'm, I'm ashamed to tell people how many hats that I wear. But one of those hats that I wore in the past was that of an accountant. <laughs> I know it's crazy. I haven't done accounting in a long time, so I couldn't help you with your books or your taxes. Because I'm sure things have changed a lot since the 20, almost 30 years ago when I was doing accounting. But I have come to appreciate, as a business owner with an accounting background, I almost say to myself, if you don't have an accounting background like I have or an accountant, I really don't know how you're going to make it as a business owner. I really don't. It is too important. You talk a lot, but you talk it. Now, why, let me ask you, give me some uh, a, a little meat as to why somebody as a, that's, I'm going to put, throw the word out there, fail. What are some of the things that might lead to that failure if you don't have an accountant? Automatically, the average startup don't know how much they've invested so far. Mm. They pull the money out of their 401k, Robert. Mm. They use it nine to five to fund their business. Come to find out a year later, they're still not making money. But they don't know a year later they put 50 grand in their company. Now, that's, that's, that's about as, as simple and, and plain as you can make it. And I talk about this a lot, too. I tell people, say, look, you're over at this good government job. You got your 413B, your 401K sitting over there. You finally decide to make that leap. So you come out here, you pull $150,000 out, start your little cupcake business or your little lawn repair business or your consulting business, your therapy business, and you just in there whistling like like a zippity doo -dah. Life is good. They say, hey, things must be good because I have money in the bank. <laughs> but they don't understand the debits, the credits, the assets, the liabilities. And like you said, they look up one day and it's gone because they didn't understand the accounting. Am I, am I, making, it, am I making it plain enough? You're making it so plain and simple. I hope they make it for us today. <laughs> They got to. Now, folks, let me let me just say something. Now, the Marketing Pulpit Radio Show, as I stated earlier when we opened up, we are a business development show. We want people to start successful businesses, not just for the sake of it, but because if these businesses start and they fail, they're not doing anybody any good. Okay? You're not helping anybody. So our goal is to make sure you, one, you start a business, and two, that the business succeeds. Now, people sometimes say, well, look, I don't need to, I don't, I don't really have what it takes to start a business. I don't have the patience. I don't have this or that, the other. I don't have my, my, my what I'm doing right now may not leverage or lend itself to a business. But there are other options. There's things like franchising. There are things that you can do that you can still get all the perks and privileges of a business owner without actually doing it yourself from the ground up. And even with that, every time I sell somebody a franchise, guess what I tell them for lot today? Go talk to your accountant. <laughs> That's right. 
go talk to your accountant because it's that important. So, so what? Do you know, and then we can go from here. Almost every product-based business that's out there thought up uh, unprofitable because they didn't see the number. Mm. Oh, damn it. Y'all hear this lady? Mm -hmm. Got a lot, got a, a Angela over here shaking her head all the way from Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Angela, say hello to Belagia Day. Belagia Day. Hi, Belagia Day. How are you? Happy International Women's Day. Ooh, y'all gonna start talking. Y'all gonna throw a women talk on me, hey? Uh huh. <laughs> One day of the year. <laughs> is this International Women's Day? This is International Women's Day. Yes. Get out of here. What y'all gonna do on Where's this day? With my flowers. Well, uh oh, so you should have told me. All right. I definitely, I would have had flowers for both of you, dynamic women. So what is this day about? Uh, I ain't trying to change the topic though. What is that about, uh, Angela? That? A celebration of women and the accomplishments that we've made throughout history. People like you, people like Badacha Day. If we, I don't have to look any further than this room right here. <laughs> no, actually, let's think about you know some great um, people in government, great people in history, great you know. Just look at uh, uh, women astronauts, female astronauts. You know, women that have done great things that have contributed greatly to this country. Amen. And I, and I tell you what, Balaji Day and uh, Anthony, I like what's happening in Congress right now. Uh, mm. The freshman class of the uh, House of Representatives. Man, women yet. I, I talked about this last week. Women rock. Boy, my goodness. Women <laughs> are kicking butt and taking names. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Belagia, they put a bow on it for us. So uh, give us some closing words on this, uh, why uh, businesses might fail by not having an accountant. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, accounting can be that bridge. Well, accounting is the bridge between your future and your today. It's up to you to decide which direction you want to go into. You cannot run your business without looking at the numbers at all. And I'm going to say this. Uh, I was, uh, even though I have an accounting background, I, that, that, that was like a blessing and a curse because I have an accounting background. I kept saying, well, I'll get around and do it myself. Well, Philosophy, I called her one day. I'm trying to get a government contractor. I'm trying to become a government contractor. But you got to have, your stuff got to be pretty clean. <laughs> they ain't want nobody with no raggedy books fooling around with the government money. This sister got me straight. I called an accountant, somebody who knew what she was doing, and to this day, I have been, I can't thank her enough. Well, actually, if you can hang on for just a second when you come back, I'm just going to help people figure out how they can, how they can reach to you, okay? So hang on there one moment. Folks, this is the Marketing Poop, and I'm Robert Gatewood, your host. I have with me Falasha Day, the accountant. I also have the Delaware blogger, Antoinette Blake. Tune in. Uh, also tell somebody. I'm going to be talking about later on Facebook. Is Facebook a necessary evil? <laughs> you don't want to miss that coming up at 11.15. Marketing Pulpit will be right back after the break. Wow, who's, who's talking about that? What are you doing? How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. 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 Oh, you got the Apple phone. Now go up. Go up. I'm inviting, I'm inviting more people. Invite some folks. Hey. Yeah, I'm inviting lots of folks. Um, we're Delaware. Delawareans uh, representing. Probably. So we got Daryl over there. Hey, your buddy Daryl over there. Daryl's always on. Hey, Daryl. How you doing, Daryl? All right, Daryl. You guys remember to share this. Uh, hey, the cousin, everybody who's out there in the uh, Facebook land. Uh, glad you could join us today. We're about to get back on the show in a minute. Uh, don't forget to share this information. It's very important. Uh, we got the Delaware bloggers going to talk about blogging. And by all means, that jump in anytime you, we're talking about any of these topics. Sure. Thank you. I'm, I'm a guest in your house. I'm deputizing you as guest host today. All right. I, that's good. I got a lot to talk about. Got a lot to talk about. Hey, are you we're going to get uh, no, a lot to today in Fred, and then we're going to jump sober. into this blogging. Yeah, I'm probably Build your okay. brand and your business. Probably okay, okay. isn't okay. okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Uh, Daryl said a Delaware blogger in the house. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council.
Washington, W240DJ, Washington, 95.9. You know, I can't do no excuses to And worldwide at WOLDCnews.com. The views and opinions of the following show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of News Talk 1450 WOL, Radio 1 Incorporated, or their management. All right, we're back. This is the Marketing Pulpit. We're talking about accounting. We're talking about blogging. We're talking about Facebook. Boy, we got a plate full today. I told my story earlier on, talking about how I get up in the morning, I'm just turning a cartwheel because I'm a business owner and I'm free. Folks, this can happen to you too. We're giving you the ingredients. We're telling you all the things you need to do to be a successful business owner. If you don't believe me, go back. This show has been on the air for nine years. You can go back and listen to the past shows if you're just, if you're just tuning in for the first time. And just pick up some of these tips. We have them on uh, we have video. We have audio files. We have a uh, blog on the website. Just go on there and t- pick a topic. Get yourself a comfortable chair and listen up to some of these past shows. Then we bring in experts, people like uh, Palacha Day. She's our in-house accountant. She joins us the second Friday of every month. Falacha, they quickly tell the audience how they can reach you so that they can get this valuable information that I sure, hopefully, they will take you up on. Yeah, so they can find me on all things social media. Falacha, they accountant spell F-O-L-A-S-A-D-E. They can also just give me a call in the office since they're pretty local, 202-618-1297. All right, folks. Thank you, Palacio Day. Thank you. You are a prize. You are a gem. And happy woman's... What do you call International Women's International Day. International Woman. <laughs> <laughs> you are the poster child of international womanhood. So thank you for joining us. All right. Yeah, thank you. Amazing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank our sponsor also, BLE Executive Suites. Uh, once again, here's another powerful sister, Miss uh, Bernadette Clay. She has these three locations here in the D.C. area, uh, office suites, uh, virtual services, uh, one in National Harbor, uh, right there near Tangent Outlet. They have one over there in um, uh, Hub Zone up in College Park, and they have the one right there in Largo, Maryland, near the uh, football stadium. If you have office needs, whether it's an office suite or a virtual service, someone to answer your phone, places to have your mail dropped off, uh, these nice conference rooms and meeting suites. And, oh, my goodness, it is, you would not, you would be, it would really blow your mind the difference between how your company will be viewed. Let's say right now you're meeting people over at Tasty Freeze. You're saying, look, let's meet over here at the, at the McDonald's. I mean, you can do that for one or two times. Right. Eventually, you got to start looking like you're a real business. But the reason that most people don't, Antoinette, is because they feel like it's going to break the bank. Right. Well, but guess what? If you have, um, let's say you have your office at home, but you still may need a place to make that professional presentation, you can take advantage of their virtual services and just meet, rent the room just for your important meetings. That could be once a week, it could be twice a week, it could be once a month. But you still get that professional look that will blow people's mind. People come into my office and they, they, they start singing the Jefferson song, moving on up. It's like, Robert, we didn't know you were, you were ro- rolling like this. Well, that's because of BLE Executive Suites gives me that appearance. And I don't want to spend all my money on office space. I've got other stuff to do, like marketing and accounting. <laughs> it's the complete package that makes you successful. So call BLE Executive Suites and let them show you how to put the best foot forward. Uh, They have a spring spring special now going on. You can get a free month of service on a one-year lease by just mentioning Robert Gatewood in the Marketing Pulpit Radio Show. You can also get a free month of their virtual services, no strings attached. Just tell them Robert Gatewood from the Marketing Pulpit sent you. Take advantage of this service, folks. We're trying to make people successful today. Call them at 301-322-1700 or go to blesuites.com and tell them Robert at the Marketing Pulpit Thank you. I want to welcome everybody out there in Radio One land. Uh, I'd like to thank the people that make this show possible. First of all, Dr. Kathy Hughes, who had the vision to put this show together. WOL Radio One is a story, has a storied past. Really, it's going to be for the history books, and it's already being represented around the world. We have the Howard University School of Communication named in her honor. 
And, of course, we want to thank Ms. Karen Jackson. She's the sales ma general sales manager over here, Mr. Ron Thompson, the program director. We want to thank Mr. Alonzo, our engineer, everybody who puts this show together. And we need these kind of mouthpieces for our community. We're not all about just hooping and hollering, folks, and dancing and boogieing and carrying on. <laughs> We're about business. And that's what the marketing pulpit is all about. Like, Also, welcome everybody out there in Facebook and social media land. Emma and everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us today. I have a young lady in the studio this morning with me. Um, I just can't say enough about her. I had the pleasure of meeting her through Madam Matt, Mr. Daryl Spears. That's why Daryl, he's like the bomb boy. If y'all don't know Daryl Spears, you better find this guy. Yes. <laughs> this definitely. guy is like a matchmaker. He is a business matchmaker. And I just want to say hats off to him. Uh, he has his company, Elite Conversations. Check him out and get on his, become one of his consultants, one of his, uh, he has so many things going on. So I want to say thank you to him for making, making the introduction. We met at the uh, business conference we had back in the uh, back in the winter, and met uh, Anthony Ned and some few other great people. And uh, matter of fact, we were both on the panel to do classes, and I came on right after you. Exactly. And that's the first time we met. And I said, so I caught the end of your show of your presentation. I said, this sister got it going on. This sister has it going on. And so I'm glad we were able to make the connection. We've stayed in touch. And so I said, it's just a matter of time before I can get her to come all the way out of Delaware to come down here and get on the show. <laughs> so without further ado, I want you to introduce yourself um, to the audience. Tell them what you do. And then we're going to jump. I have a couple of the questions about this blogging. Everybody heard about blogging, but they don't quite get it. So tell us, introduce yourself to the audience. All right. Thank you, Robert. And yeah, I have to agree. Daryl is a marketing magnet. He puts people together. He got us together at the Elite Conversations event earlier uh, in the year or last year, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here and I'm going to have you on my podcast as well. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that this spring, right? Spring, right? You heard it. that, right? <laughs> I'm Antoinette Blake, the DE Diva, aka the Delaware Blogger. And I am one that owns A Blake Enterprises, social media management and consulting. And what I do there is I work with small business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and what I like to call side hustlers. Ooh. Not only ensuring that they're using social media because we know social media is here to stay mm -hmm. the horse has left the gate it's not going anywhere but people don't really know how to navigate it how to connect with their target market audience and I work with them to connect by curating content creating content and engaging in what I like to call an H to H manner heart to heart heart to heart, heart, to heart. I was gonna ask you with that H to H yeah, H to H because people don't go to social media to be sold to Right. They go to socialize, That's right. congratulate, commiserate, you know, uh, you know, just have fun. Well, mm -hmm. it used to be fun, but we know what's going on now with Facebook. A lot of changes going on, so I'm, I'm interested for that next portion because uh, Mark and his team are really making changes to Facebook. Well, let me ask you this, though, and I always like to ask this question because I like to get down into the, the raison d'etre, the reason for being. Mm. What made you decide to get into this line of work to begin with? Oh, I'm, that's a good question. Well, as an educator by trade, I received my BS uh, degree from in elementary education from Delaware State did College. You, did you teach? Yes, I did. Ooh. I did teach. I taught. <laughs> I have mad love for teachers, folks. Third grade. I think teachers, uh, teachers and nurses, I think they're from heaven. I think they are angels <laughs> in disguise. So, yes, congratulations on that. Thank you. And I'm, I'm still teaching. Okay. So, to get into blogging, I've always liked to write. Okay. Um, my grandmom, she raised my sister and myself in Nourishell, New York. And for the last 16 years of her life, she passed away at the age of 98. She transitioned. I held her hand. It was a beautiful experience. But um, we were so close. Mm -hmm. She just raised me right. You know, we didn't have a lot of money, but we had a lot of love. And she oh. taught me how to thrift. Sure. Thrift. Don't cry. All right. Okay. She's, she's looking out. She would have been 106 this year. Yeah, she was, she was great. Nana was on, on target. I'm a big softy. Oh, gosh. Don't cry. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> International Women's Day. We're celebrating right, Nana's. All our Nana's. Happy yeah. International Women's Day. All, right, Nana, all the Nana's out all there. All the Nana's out there. But I started writing simply due to the fact that I had a lot of extra time when she passed. And I was doing fashion and fun after 50. Yeah, I'm after 50. I'm a boomer and a proud boomer. So I started writing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to Facebook. But believe it or not, I didn't like to get in front of cameras. Mm -hmm. And this was back in 2012. I didn't know what to believe. I know, right? Me too. <laughs> So I started writing. And, and now then, you don't know a camera you don't I, like. Hey, hey, I'm the <laughs> selfie queen. <laughs> what can I say? So just writing and connecting and broadening my brand. You know, leaving a legacy Ooh. is the bottom, you know, the real, the real deal on personal blogging. 
I feel is that you're leaving a legacy for not only your family, but for those generations coming up behind you. That's exactly what I said before you got here. I All was right. talking about that legacy piece. Well, let me ask you this. Let's, let's jump to the chase here. Okay, sure. What is blogging? You have like a quick answer. What blogging sure. What's is? What's a blog? A web blog. It's an online journal. Okay, there okay. you go. I got a diary. I brought my diary. I'm not going to show you. I brought my diary from 1973. Okay. I used to write down everything. What I did, what I ate, where I went, what boys I liked, what boys I didn't like, blah, 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 blah. So mommy bloggers, back, remember back in 2010, mm, mommy yeah. bloggers, yeah, right? They're home. They're taking care of the kids. They're shopping. They start blogging about their life, you know, what's going on. And then it kind of expanded because people literally are trying to find somebody that is like-minded and they want to share that information more than just at that time, 140 characters in Twitter. Now it's 280, more than just a Facebook post. It's really a way to journal and connect with others that are interested in maybe what you have to say, do, or you know, share. So why should a business own a blog? Well, uh, that's another great answer, especially now. Mm -hmm. It humanizes the business. Oh, I like that. It, hum it puts a face to the business because you know what's happening is, again, like I said, social media, people don't go to social media to be sold to. They go to socialize. Right. So a big business is going to be socializing with their followers. It makes them feel like, okay, they really respect me. They really want my money. You become likable. Yeah, relatable, likable. Exactly. Okay, and you. remember the days where we used to just throw away money? Long, long time ago. We don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are researching. Before we make a purchase, I don't care if it's for a pack of gum mm -hmm. or a new car, we're online searching. That's right. And if we come along across a, a brand or a business that has a blog that's giving good information other than their products and or service, maybe they're giving holistic tips on staying healthy, you know, how to, um, like the guy, that Taco Bell, he just gave them the biggest promo because he got stuck in, this, in the snow mm -hmm. and he had Taco Bell hot sauce packets. Wow. So that's what he survived on. So now Taco Bell just got like major props. Yeah. And now they, they rewarded him with a year's full of Taco Bell, whatever the case may be. But it humanizes your business. It, it makes you likable. Exactly. So a blog is a great tool, a branding tool, and especially for businesses because a website is static. It doesn't change. That's right. It doesn't change. You're right. You put that services on there, your about us page on there, and it pretty much just sits there unless somebody, a new person comes in the company. Or, but that's rare. But blog changes. It does it because frequently. the content you're creating is consistent. And you know what we talk about, the SEO, that search engine optimization. And you own a blog. Remember this. You own a blog. You do not own any social media platform. I don't care if you have a business on Facebook, a paid business page on Facebook. If Mark decides to shut it down or make you pay to play, which is what they're doing now, right. then your business is sunk. That is such an important point. And I tell people that sometimes a lot of companies, they, they have these affiliate websites. They, have, they work for a radio show, a station, and they cut down their own website. Mm-hmm. I said, wait a minute, suppose you don't work there anymore. You, are, go. Not, you don't have any presence online. There you Same go. Same thing with a blog. Right. If Facebook decides to leave, Twitter decides to leave, Instagram decides to leave, Pinterest or whatever, if that's your way of blogging and they decide to go out of business or kick you off for whatever reason, now you don't have your blog anymore. It's gone. It's gone. And you know what, Robert? A blog post has longevity. Mm -hmm. For example, millennials, they're trying to learn how to navigate this world. So they'll, what, Google everything. Mm -hmm. So if they need to boil an egg, they'll Google how to boil an egg, right? right? They may be, there are millions of blog posts out there on how to blog an egg. I mean, boil, boil an egg. But you're not going to find a Facebook post about boiling eggs. Right. So a blog has a long life, long shelf life. Now, this is what I want you to do. If you can give us, uh, quickly, about five tips on okay, sure. building a successful blog. Okay. Whether it's a personal blog or a professional blog. Consistency. Okay. Consistency like is key. I'm going to give you the three C's and I'll give you three P's and now I'll, I'll chop off the last one and make it five. Mm -hmm. Consistency, content, community. Consistency, contact, community. Okay, I like that. Passion and your purpose. You say my favorite words. Get my tissue again. <laughs> you just cracking me up. You just bringing me up here today. I like that. This is this is marketing. People can call it whatever they want to, but it falls under the umbrella of marketing because you're using all the marketing buzzwords. So break them down. Give me a little bit. So we're going to take a quick break and come sure. back. 
Folks, you're listening to The Marketing Pool, but I have in the studio the Delaware blogger, Internet Blake. Check her out at, out there on the Internet World. Also, she's on the homepage of The Marketing Pool. If you have a question, call us 1-800-450-7876. When we come back, we're going to say, is is Facebook evil that some folks think? <laughs> now, folks, they're going to cut me off. Now, I'm sitting there laughing on Facebook. They're like, hey, but you can't say that. <laughs> you need to stick around for the segment, though. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back after the break. Marketing Pool. Washington, D.C.'s Good. Thank you. Of course, we never have enough time. Right. So we're going to have about two more Jane, minutes. I have something through. to tell you. Yesterday, Jane, I was uh, diagnosed with bipolar disorder. With yeah. Um, how about a slice? Let's hit the food court. Your, uh, Jen, your I have something on. to tell you. Yesterday, I was diagnosed yeah. with bipolar yeah. disorder. Yeah. Well, we could just yeah. go see the yeah. seven boarding yeah. movie instead of the six morning Jen, I have something to tell you. Yesterday, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. You just need some new earrings and you'll feel a lot Hey, Delara, thank you very much for the compliment. We got the boss in the house, the Delaware blogger boss. If you're not blogging boss, oh, I like the blogging boss. Take my name. I know. I send you a bill. The branding. Marketing guy. I get paid to think. Whatever it takes. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah, I'm going to get you something This is great. More information. I love what I'm doing here. I love the fact that we're passing out information and hopefully we can share some light. We can open some doors for people. And this information is no good in our head. We have to share it. All right, I, know, I hope those fingers are working over there, working on that blog. Uh, having the studio, the Delaware blogger, Antoinette Blake, and uh, we want to give out the information. And call if you have a question, 1-800-450-7876. You have a question for any topic today, and we want to have uh, Antoinette to give out her information as well on how you can reach her. But you can also go to Marketing Pulpit and uh, get that information. Uh, my company is Gatewood Marketing and Web. We have helped so many companies. Matter of fact, this year, I'm kind of losing count because the word has gotten out that if you're going to be successful in business, you have to have some help. Now, it's not a matter of if or it's a matter of how much. Now, some people have a little more skills in business than others, but most people need some type of help. And that's why our services are tailored so that we can help you with a little help or we can do the whole thing for you. Call my company, 301-839-2836. That's Gatewood Marketing and Web. Or go to market, gatewoodmarketing.com and check out the profile and look at some of the companies that we've worked with. Uh, thrilled to have in the studio today, Miss Antoinette Blake. She is a blogger, and we hear the word blogs all the time. Most people don't know what the heck it is, what it means, and she's shedding some light on that. And, of course, we're not going to get it all today. That's why we're going to have her information uh, given out. And she has a tool that can help you with this process. So once again, uh, Internet, put a bow on this for us. All right, Robert, thank you. As I stated before the break, think about the three C's, the content, um, your, your community, your content, and what did I say? The content, consistency, Woo! consistency, content, and community, right. your passion and your purpose. And I always say content is good. You don't want to just put anything out there. You want your content to be so good because we know that content is king, mm. but you want your your, your audience to wear the crown, meaning so good that they're going to share it with their circles of family and friends. Mm -hmm. So right now I have what is called a three-part build your blog workbook. And it's a blowout sale, a blowout promotion of three parts, $8, dollar shipping, $9, quick, easy, breezy. My blog is dellblogger.com. My website is ablakeenterprises.com. You can send me an email at info at ablakeenterprise. I tell you what, just use the hashtag Delaware Blogger, all one word, on Google, and I will show up everywhere. We have a caller on the line. Miss Jada, welcome to the Marketing Pull Up It. What's on your mind? Hi, how are you? Doing wonderful, thank you. Okay. Yes, I, I was... I, I... I was listening, started listening a little, little while. I woke up and started listening. She needs your content. And, and, am I coming through okay? Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear. Okay. And and so I'm, I'm so glad because, you know, I want to get uh, something going. I've been wanting to, to get into some kind of business, but I don't want the 9 to 5 thing. I want to be flexible and, you know, do things when I want to. Girl, That's you are right. after my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, 
Yeah, and I'm so glad you gave the number, even though I know this number because I'm a veteran. You know, I'm an old veteran of this show. Okay. But I didn't know. I didn't know that this was the number to call you at because there are different numbers. You know, to call the call uh, different people on the on the on shows. What? So I'm so glad you gave the number and you gave it plain and clear so people could understand. I was like, I was like, well, when is he gonna get the number? <laughs> and then when the young lady before. She gave her information, and, and it, you know, it wasn't, you know, too plain and clear, but I did get it, and I called to make sure that I had the right number. And so um, I want to get this young lady's number, too, because I'm glad she said, you know, informed us about, you know, the Internet and blogging and stuff. Oh, so right. I didn't waste my time going and getting stuff on the Internet when I need to, uh, you know, on Facebook and all that when I need to have a blog, right? That's right. I'll tell you what I want you to do, Miss Jada. Uh, we're going to give out our information again, too. But if you leave your information with the engineer, we'll reach out to you personally and get, make sure we can help you in any way we can. How about that? Okay, can I ask you one question? Yes, ma'am, please. I'm going to go to this seminar. You know, they like they be advertising stuff on, on the TV. And most of the time, it ends, it ends up being, you know, just nothing, something crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to go to this seminar to see, you know, what they're talking about. And they're talking about flipping flipping property and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, so I wonder what you what you think about that. And I, when you was talking, I'd say, well, if, if I do do something like that, then maybe I could have a... a uh, marketing some kind of uh, advertising saying, uh, you know, that we buy properties or something like that, you know? I know. What you were talking about. Well, I agree. Uh, I tell you what, this is what I would say that. There is a very lucrative trade of buying and reselling homes. Uh, it's gotten very popular lately. A lot of people are doing it right now. And anything, you want to make sure you get in at the right time. Make sure you have the right resources, that you are funded properly, that you're dealing with reputable companies, and talk to somebody in the industry. Call around, get some, get some help. Once you get that business uh, at the foundation level where you're about to start moving things along, Call a guy like me, and we can actually walk you through those steps and help you answer some of those questions and give you the questions to ask to the people that are working with you. Because I've been, I worked in every industry, including real estate. I, did, I have clients right now in the real estate industry, people who are real estate investors, people who are real estate salespeople, people who are staging. So I know every area of that business. Have, I will work with you to help work with them to make sure you ask the right questions. So. Okay, so I'm so glad. I'm so glad, you know, God made me listen to you this morning. Won't be up at this time because, uh, because you know, I, I, I need to call, call you as soon as I find out and I think that it's something legitimate, right? Yes, ma'am. I will, I will actually help you check them out, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, would you like to go to the seminar? It's March 12th at 12 o'clock. But I tell you what, leave that information. Let me, I'll reach back out to you after the show, okay? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Miss Jada. Thank you for calling and keep on listening, okay? All right. All right, folks. That's Miss Jada. Miss Jada ready. She's ready. She, uh, and she's a vet. Ready. And, you know, that's another thing. I talk about vets. You know, um, yeah, social media, blogging is a great way for, for, for vets to, uh, you know, get all that out of their head. All right. Thank you again, Miss Jada. Folks, I'm going to, uh, and thank you, Gerald Brown, all the folks out there in uh, internet land who are tuning in, Charette, everybody. We've got a great listening audience out there today. I'm just going to quickly, because I know I teased everybody talking about Facebook. Is Facebook a uh, necessary evil? Well, a, a, a guy named David Heinmeier Hansen, he quit Facebook recently. He was the uh, he has a big company called Basecamp. He said that Facebook is, frankly, has a despicable business model. And that's predicated on violating people's privacy, and they're running an ad monopoly. That's what he said in the interview. Now, I want you to also balance that against what the uh, Facebook chief operating officer, Cheryl Sandberg, said. She said, if you are a small business, you can't afford to buy a big TV ad. You can't afford to put up a big billboard on the side of the road. You can't buy a big newspaper banner for most small businesses. What Facebook has done is that democratize advertising because of technology. They're saying basically that because of Facebook, small companies who cannot advertise generally in some of the big popular mediums now have a voice. 
So we're balancing that against what uh, Mr. Hassan of uh, Hanslin of uh, Base Camp said against what Ms. Sandberg has said. I'm going to say this. They're both right to a certain point. Yes, Facebook has violated people's privacy. They've done some pretty despicable things. And we often find ourselves asking ourselves, is Facebook a necessary evil? I'm not going to go as far as saying it's evil, but I'm doing, I do say this. Anybody will violate you if you allow them. Don't drop your guard with anybody. I am saying as a small business owner, there are other opportunities out here. Things like networking, meetups, there's Every Door Direct, there's affiliate marketing, there's SEO, there's radio, there's blogging, there's cross-selling, upselling, and then you take the uh, economic side of lowering your expenses to make sure that you have money to eventually start doing some of this big-time advertising, like on mainstream radio, TV, and billboards. So, yes, Facebook has some issues. Do you, do you cast them as evil? I mean, I'm going to let you make that conclusion. But I, like myself, I look at it almost like those little signs you stick on the side of the road that, uh, that litter the landscape. I don't like those either. But sometimes, if you're a small business, that's the best you can do. Exactly. Same thing with Facebook. There are not a lot of options out there. I can spend 50 bucks and bring 4,000 eyeballs to my business. Very few things out there can do that. But always, always make sure that you apply marketing. We need to balance advertising with marketing. Marketing is about strategy. It's about weighing your options, making sure your product is in front of the right audience. So before you kick Facebook or anybody to the curb, talk. Think marketing, think strategy. Are you spending your money in the best place and getting the best return on your investment? I'm going to tell you, there is no perfect solution out here. There are no angels. Everybody's in it to make money when you're talking about marketing and advertising. But as a business owner, you have to weigh the options and make sure you're making the right decision for your business. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Folks, I want to thank everybody today. Also, think about this as a business owner. We do marketing, we do advertising, but don't forget this. You got, and I heard you say the word, uh, internet, hustle. Side hustlers. I don't care how many pinstripe suits you put on, how many uh, belts, uh, what, carpenter belts you hang around your waist, how many Facebook ads you run, how many times you get up on the radio show. If you don't have that hustle in you, it's going to be tough to make it out here. Mm -hmm. You got to have that hustle. Every successful business owner out here has that hustle. I want to thank everybody out there in Radio Land, Cheryl, uh, Kelsey. Thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank you again, Internet. Great show. Got to have you back. I wish we had more time, but I'm looking forward to coming on your show as well, folks. And thank you very much. Also, go to our Facebook, go to our Marketing Pulpit page and check out our event calendar. We have a big event coming up on April 13th over at Metropolitan AME Zion Church talking about taking care of people in their golden years. This is the Marketing Pulpit. Folks, we'll be back next week at the same time. Thank you for lots of days. Thank you, Internet. And I want to thank you, the listener. And if you want to be successful, you got to do these three things. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. And you got to do it right. Enough talk. Let's get to work. Well, folks, that wraps up another show. Charette, hey, you are right now. Charette, if anybody knows marketing, it's Charette. She's almost like me, too. She's a serial marketer. She's a serial entrepreneur. Why am I thinking that? Hey, Laura, how you doing there, dear? I hope everything's going out. Laura, she's another serial entrepreneur. These are folks that are just, they wake up in the morning, they're looking for a way to either serve somebody, uh, be successful in business. They don't mind changing it up. They don't mind doing something different. They don't mind helping somebody, partnering people. That is one of those ingredients that, that's under related, that's under, undervalued. You cannot succeed. Especially in today's world. That's right. Hey, that Gerald. That Gerald, that's a good guy. He's uh, Mr. Attorney. 
at the plumbing out there doing things in the plumbing land. Great folks. Love you guys all. I just love what you're doing out here. And uh, we're going to tune out. But guess what? We're going to be back. What I want you to do for me, though, share this show. Yes, please. Some valuable information in here. Please share us. And uh, anybody out here need any of these services, go to Marketing yeah. Pulpit. Let's see what I got on. Antoinette. Hey, Antoinette. How you doing? Yeah. My, my namesake. Your namesake. Denise and Fred. Thank you. Hey, Denise, Fred. How you guys doing? Keon. My little brother. What's up, bro? What's up, little bro? Yeah. Thank you guys for supporting. We'll be back next week. I'll be back in Delaware tonight. See you.